Let's have a word of prayer as we get started today. Father, we thank you again now, Lord, for your goodness to us. We thank you again, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for many blessings of life that you have bestowed upon us, Lord, that we simply cannot ever, will never be able to say thank you for. And Lord, you who inhabit eternity, Lord, we are so grateful today for Jesus and for heaven and for the forgiveness of sin. Bless in these next few moments, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins, and he did, and if all of our sins are paid for, and they are, and if we will never be called into account for them, and we won't, what relationship then does sin have in the Christian's life? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11 for a moment. 1 Corinthians 11, remain seated. As we think about that, before we, the Lord's table today, it tells us in chapter 11, and in beginning in verse 28, let a man examine himself, and so eat of that bread and drink of that cup, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with, this, with the world. That we should not be condemned with this world. Now, if the first three things I said are true, and they are true, they are true, that holiness people... People like, and please don't get mad at me for saying this, but people like the old-time Methodist, the old-time Methodist, um, people like the Assembly of God, people like, I'll, I'll put it like this, anybody who believes that you have to live a good life in order to keep your salvation. There are a lot of what I call holiness groups, Church of the Nazarene, used to be that way. They're not that way anymore. They really don't believe anything anymore. But, but Church of the Nazarene, years and years ago, the, the Methodist Church, years and years ago, Assembly of God, somewhat today, the Church of God, uh, somewhat today, all these groups believe that you have to maintain a good life in order to go to heaven. Now, if the first three things I said are true, if Jesus died on the cross for our sins, if all of our sins have been forgiven, and if we will never be called into account are true, then what they believe can't be true. That you have to maintain good works. And the Bible says this, be careful to maintain good works. But the good works that we maintain are not for our salvation. So then the question comes in, well, in what way does sin affect the believer today? If, as a believer, our sins are forgiven, Jesus died to pay for all our sins, all our sins, and we'll never be called into account for them. If I will never have, if I will never be judged, and I won't be, we repeat again that the wages of sin is death. The only way to pay for sin is in the lake of fire. Now, nobody's going there. Now, the false doctrine of, well, you have to go and pay for your sins for a while, in purgatory or something, that's just what that is. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, when he had by himself purged our sins. That's the only purgatory there is when Jesus purged our sins on the cross. He paid for them, paid for every one of them. And what effect, if that's true, what effect does sin have on the believer now? And as the holiness groups wrongfully say, well... You guys believe that since you are saved, you can live any way you want. A long time ago, a while ago, 15 years ago, and you say, well, that isn't very long. No, it's not. Somebody that I know, and that some of you know, said to their mother that, you know, the Baptists don't believe you can lose your salvation. 
And her mother said, well, that's not right. That's what Baptists believe, but that isn't right. And they, she said to her mother, well, you know that they believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. Well, her mother said, well, and they believe that you can live any way you want. That Baptists Baptist teach, this is what she said, Baptists teach, you can live any way you want. Now, I've never taught that, and I've never said that, and I do not believe that's true for a minute. She said, well, and she said to her mother, well, the Jenkinses live a, a, a stricter life than you do. And she said this, well, the Baptists are sneaky like that. <laughs> now, I don't know what that means, but the Baptists are sneaky, but yeah, they're sneaky. But anyway, so what does it, what does sin have to do with us? How does sin affect us? What is it that comes into play into our life? If we are eternally forgiven and all of our sins are forgiven and we will not be judged for them at the judgment seat, judgment seat is a reward seat, how does it affect us then today? What, what does it play in our life? According to our reading here today in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says if we would judge ourselves, we would not have to be judged. The truth of the matter is that people are watching you and I. Whether you like it or not, people are watching you. People know that you go to church. People who rob people know that you're in church and are probably robbing you right now. But, but people are watching you. You say, well, I don't want to be watched. I don't want people to, to notice me. I just want to kind of blend in with the crowd, and I really don't want to be noticed by anybody. Well, that's too bad because people are watching you. If you claim the name of Christ, they say, well, well, well that person... They go over to that church over there. They go to that tower. You know, they, they used to, uh, used to be the rumor around town that if you attended church here, this was because I think Ms. Plemons said this to you, that if you go to church here, uh, women have to wear their, their dresses all the way down to the floor. Now, people are watching us. Now, you know that's not true. Well, people are watching us. And whether you like it or not, people are watching you. If you name the name of Christ, and if people know, if you would, could and would be convicted in a court of law of being a Christian, people are watching you. They know when you lay out of church. They know when you don't go to church. They know that they, they and they hold you, really, lost people hold us to a higher standard than we hold ourselves. Now, so what then, how then does sin affect us? What what does it do in our life? What part does it play in our life? And as Paul said, that if we would judge ourselves here in 1 Corinthians 11, we would not have to be judged. How does sin affect? What does it do in our life now as a believer, as a son of God? I said this morning that we will be judged. We are being judged, excuse me, as sons of God. That's how we're being judged. We'll be judged as a servant. We have been judged as a sinner. But right now we're being judged as a son. I've told you before, when, when Tim left, uh, when Tim left for Alaska, I, I, told him, I, I, I told him two things. I said, Tim, I want you to remember two things, but I want you to remember, number one, number one, I want you to remember that you're a Christian. I want you to remember that, but you're a Christian. People are watching. Number two, remember what your last name is. Remember that. Just, just remember that. And I want to remind you today that you need to be reminded that we are Christian. That's what we are by, by birth. We're a conviction, or we are a Christian by birth. So how does sin, what does that do? It can't cause me to lose my salvation. It cannot cause me to lose my salvation. It will not cause me to lose my salvation. But when, uh, as a believer, I live a life that people don't see Christ in me, and there are people, it's like I was talking this morning about Alice Cooper, who claims to be born again. He, he says now he is born again. He says he is now. He still plays the same old rock and roll, the same old stuff. He's still maybe not demonic, but he, he says he's born again. He said, well, how does that affect me? What does that do to me? How does that affect me? How does a believer, does that affect me? Why don't you jump back to Hebrews for a moment in chapter 12. Hebrews 12. If, 
if I cannot lose my salvation. And it is obvious from the Word of God that you cannot. Is it, and somebody said, will say this. Well, how come, how come so many people, preacher, believe that you can? How, many, how come so many people have the idea, well, you can lose your salvation? Because they'll, they'll pick and cherry pick verses out of the Bible to make them apply. You can find any verse in the Bible to fit your pet idea. But what does the consistent teaching teach? Well, the consistent teaching of Scripture is that now we are the Son. Right now. It does not say when you die, you will be the Son of God. It says now, right now, we are a Son of God. Now, in Hebrews 12, what happens today when a Christian sins? What happens when a Christian sins? Well, number one, we can judge ourselves. We can judge ourselves so that we would not be condemned with the world. As I said, the world holds us to a higher standard. And so you know, the, the world says, well, uh, the world smokes and the world gets tanked up and the world does this and the world does that. You Christians ought not to do that. But when we do that, then we are condemned with the world. Well, you're just like everybody else. And if you never have had anybody tell you this, there are a lot of people who will tell you, well, I'm just as good as the Christians in your church. Now, that isn't true, but they want to say that anyway. Well, I'm just as good as that person. I had a man in my kitchen one night tell me this. He said, I'm just as good as the other people in my church. But being good is not going to get you to heaven. Now, in chapter 12, what happens now? One, I can judge myself. I can go to God and say, God, I understand. And I don't think we do understand, but God, I understand that what I did was wrong. And Lord, I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me of it. Now, are we asking to be saved? No. Are we asking to have our feet washed? Absolutely. Read John chapter 13. Sometime, we don't have time this morning, but this afternoon, but John 13. I need to get my feet washed every once in a while. Every day, as a matter of fact. But in chapter 12, verse 3, verse 4, ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And have ye forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children? That's what we are. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. My father spanked me from time to time. But he, he did a lot of... Uh, constructive uh, conversation, we'll, we'll say that. He would talk to me a great deal. Mom would talk to me a great deal, said this or said that, don't do this, don't do that. And verse 5 kind of is that indication, my son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. God speaks to us when we sin. God speaks to us. Now, did you always get a spanking? No. Did you get lots of spankings? No. Did you get some? Yes. Did you deserve it? Yes. Did you get disciplined? I don't necessarily like the word punishment. Did you get disciplined? Yes. Did you get sent to your room? Yes. Did you not get uh, something to eat? Yes. Uh, those things. Now, God does not always, God does not always beat us over the head to get our attention. Most of the time, in my observation in Christianity, God speaks to us. Now, it says in verse 5, not the faint when thou art rebuked of him. My father would say, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't want you doing that. Don't do that. All right? God says to us, don't do that. Now, uh, the third thing is this. We can refuse to hear. We can refuse to hear. We can, number one, say, all right, God, I understand that I sin. I'm sorry. Lord, wash my feet. Cleanse me of it. And if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and to wash us from all righteousness. Secondly, God speaks to us and says, okay, um, it, you didn't, did not come to your attention, but I just want to remind you that what you did was wrong. I, I want to remind you about that. You, you shouldn't have done that. You should not have done it. I told you not to do that. Now, I don't want you to do that. And we can say, okay, God, I heard you loud and clear. And, but we, we may do it again. And somebody says, well, will God forgive me? 
Absolutely. That's what grace is. Now, we go back to our holiness people and say, well, what you're saying is then you can sin and sin and sin and ask God and ask God and ask God and ask God to forgive you of what you have done, and God will continually forgive you. I want you to understand that if you choose to live that way, there may be some serious consequences. In our reading of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it said, for many are sickly and some sleep. Now in verse 6 of Hebrews 12, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. I don't think my father ever disciplined me that he hated me. I don't think he ever did. And I doubt if there's a parent in here who would say, well, I had to discipline my children and I hated them. No. For whom the Lord loveth, he loves you and he wants you to be a child of the, of the king and to live like a child of the king. And so he says to you, I don't want you to do that. I don't do that. Okay, Lord, you got my attention loud and clear. I hear you. And God says, I, I spoke to you several times sternly about this, and you refused. Now, verse 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. Does God love you? Absolutely. Will he chasten you? Well, absolutely, because notice what it says. Scourges every son whom he receiveth. Everybody gets chastened by God. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chases not? Who is it that the father does not speak to? Who is it that God does not, or who is it that as an earthly father, uh, you don't speak to your child? I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. Now God speaks to us that way. Now of whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. Why did my father, why did my mother tell me not to ride my tricycle out in the middle of the street? Because she hated me? No, because she loved me and she didn't want me to get run over. Why did my mother get so upset with me when she saw, we, was, uh, we were all sitting out in this teepee-like thing and the smoke was rolling out of the top of it. I mean, I'm only six years old. Why did my mother uh, get so upset when she figured out we were out there, uh, we didn't have a bonfire in the middle of the tent? Why did she go, did she hate me? No, because she loved me. Now, whom the Lord loveth, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chases not? God loves, but if he be without chastisement. Now notice this. Oh, this is important. Notice those next three words. Whereof all, or four words, all are partakers. That means every, every person in here. How does sin affect our life today? Simply this. Are we, how does it affect? Simply this. Are we being a poor testimony? Are we a poor signboard for Jesus? See, our sins are forgiven. We're on our way to heaven. We'll never be judged for them. But people are watching us. They are watching us. Remember I told you about the Presbyterian preacher that I know. That their biggest controversy, he said the last great controversy they had at their church was whether or not to have an open bar at their next dinner. Hey, why don't we have that discussion? Amen? Here, I mean, you know, it's like, people say, well, you guys claim to be saved over there. Yeah. Now, we're not perfect. Never will be. But in the, my life and in your life, as God reveals things to us, if we would judge ourselves, we won't be. Sumner Wemp, my teacher in school, gone to heaven now, always said two things are going to happen if you're saved. One, you'll be changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. you either be changed, or secondly, you'll be chastised. You'll be changed. Now, does God always beat us? No. But does God always speak to us? Yeah, absolutely. I thank God. I mean this. I thank God for his convicting Holy Spirit in my life and for speaking to me. You know, one of the ways you tell yourself, Holy Spirit speaks to you. You say, no, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. Since we are saved, since we are forgiven, since we'll never be judged for those things again, if I went out and lived the way I want, here's my feeling, and I've talked to other preachers about it, I believe God would kill me. I believe that he would. And in some cases, as Paul said, some sleep among you. Let me just remind you today that let a man examine himself. It doesn't mean whether we're trying to see whether we're saved or not. But what is our attitude? Not do we sin. That's a given. 
but what is our attitude toward sin in our life? <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> it's the flesh. Lawrence Brinkerhoff, he's in heaven now. He found out the truth. He would always tell you, ah, the flesh is nothing. Don't even worry about it. Don't worry about anything that happens. That's not exactly true. Of whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. God loves you, he'll chasten you. No, God does love you, he will chasten you. How does it affect me now? How's my testimony now? People watch me, whether I like it or not. They are watching me. Let a man examine himself. Just check yourself out. What's your attitude? Not are you a sinner. Nah. What's your attitude as a son of God towards sin in your life? Let's pray. Father, we thank you again. Lord, help us to examine our hearts and examine our lives. What's our attitude? What is our attitude? Do we just throw it off, or do we? Does it concern us? Help us to examine our hearts today. Lord, if there's any known thing there, Lord, help us to confess it. Lord, really, again, it's not that we're not sinners, but we're saints on our way to heaven, saved by grace, sins forgiven. Yet, Lord, sin still does have an effect upon us. Lord, as others watch us, Lord, it's either drawing us away or drawing us toward. Lord, may we examine our attitude this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.